The Warden vs. Beast action gets cranked up to 11 on the cool scale when Ursaw and his allies lay siege to the Oasis in a bid to steal the wildlife grid. This is the best issue of the series and we're going to talk about it in our review of Rook Exodus number 4 from Image Comics. See you in 3. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Rook Exodus number 4 from Image Comics. I am so pleased with this issue. Action, action, and more action. Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok waged the most captivating sci-fi war comic of 2024 when the crow, the wolf, and the turtle face off against the bear, the hog, and the snake. If that sounds really weird, it looks a hell of a lot cooler than it sounds. So, let's go. When last we left Rook and Direwolf in Rook Exodus number 3, they approached Carapace to re-establish the neural network of the wildlife grid that joins all the wardens together. What was their goal? They wanted to send out a call for the wardens who have since been isolated and disconnected since the world engine died, and they want them to join forces against Ursaw's army. Carapace reluctantly agreed because he was a little bit uncertain about Rook's intentions and motivations to fight for Exodus, but they eventually decided to do it. They formed the link, but unfortunately, even though they managed to get in touch with all the Wardens, Ursaw also got the message. That takes us to Rook Exodus number 4. We find Rook and Direwolf engaging their animals to stop Ursaw, or at least slow him down enough to complete Carapace's evacuation of the Oasis and secure the wildlife grid. When Rook catches sight of Warhog, who is Ursaw's new Warden, wearing Swine's helmet that he stole from him after he killed Swine, his fight takes on a second meaning when he decides the fight isn't over until he gets his friend's helmet back. Drama, energy, anticipation, and excitement. Here we go with all the adjectives. At some point, we're going to run out for just how power-packed this issue has turned out. Now that we know that what the wildlife grid is and the consequences if Ursaw gets his hands on it, the motivations of every character are now crystal clear. So there are stakes established. We know what they're fighting for, and that makes all the difference in the world. And then they fight, and I mean that in the best way. Rook sends his crows after Warhog, but the birds are easily scattered by the boom of Warhog's shotgun blast. Direwolf is blindsided by the attack of a gigantic snake controlled by Direwolf's former student, Na. She was expelled because she allowed the instinctive will of her snakes to have a predatory effect on her personality and mind, and now she is hooked up with Ursul. Back at the hydroelectric dam, Carapace and his remaining men secured the enigmatic wildlife grid, a spherical device with a mysterious construction to it. Unfortunately, Carapace doesn't get far when Ursaw arrives. Here, Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok give readers hard-hitting, edge-of-your-seat tension with multiple threads that show each ally in the heat of their respective battles. None of those fights look easy, or in some cases even winnable. In large part, Jason Fabok's art carries this issue in these scenes with great success. As the battle rages, the tide turns, because Direwolf, Rook, and Carapace are experienced wardens. Ursaw and his allies are not. Direwolf knocks out the less experienced Gnaw and tasers her giant snake for victory number one. Rook stalls the recently promoted Warhog just long enough for Direwolf's pack to arrive and rip Warhog to shreds. That's victory number two. He also uses that opportunity to free Swine's Sounder, a Sounder is a collection of hogs, and reclaim Swine's helmet. Sadly, fight number three, which is Carapace against Ursaw, doesn't go Carapace's way. The remarkable thing about the sequence of the scenes is the well-timed tempo Johns and Fabok use to sway the outcome of the fights between defeat and victory until they get to the outcome. You get three separate fights that are independently engaging, yet combined to create a greater whole in terms of an engrossing story. When Direwolf and Rook realize something's wrong at the Oasis, they hurry back to find Ursaw departing with the wildlife grid. They attack with everything they have, but it's not enough. The issue ends with Rook fighting his crows as much as Ursaw and a long walk off a short dam. Without a doubt, this is our favorite issue in the series so far. The stakes and motivations are now clear, while the protagonists fight for their lives against an overwhelming enemy. Some of the criticisms about the world building still remain. For example, what's a world engine? I have no idea. How did it break down? I have no idea. What's the consequence of it shutting down versus being up? And what's the difference? I have no idea. Why couldn't they fix it? I have no idea. These are the kinds of questions that should have been answered in the very beginning, but haven't. And they sort of linger in the background. But this issue is so entertaining that you don't mind not having all those answers. 
let's switch careers and talk about the art a little bit. So I'm going to clap and I'm going to give a, a chef's kiss. Mwah! Jason Faymark's art is glorious. The character designs and level of detail are arguably astounding. Every panel is a masterwork of pristine lines, dramatic angles, realistic figure compositions, and textures you can almost feel with the tip of your fingers. Faybalk deserves every cent Ghost Machine is paying him and more. If every comic that came out of Marvel and or DC looked this good, their sales would triple. You can bank on it. Okay, let's take a step back and talk about the big picture. Where does this title fit into the overall Ghost Machine timeline? We brought it up before, but so far there is no change. As it stands, this series is not part of the interconnected timeline with other titles such as Redcoat and Geiger. That may change, but as of now, Exodus is on its own, which is kind of emblematic of the series as a whole. So final thoughts, what do we think about Rook Exodus number four? It's a glorious display of pulse pounding drama and action on every single page. We've criticized the series for its lack of clarity on the world building aspects, but this issue is so much fun, you can't help but marvel at the cinematic quality and imagining of beasts at war in a sci-fi context. Jeff Johns has a winner on his hands, and Jason Faybach's art is simply stunning. Therefore, we're going to give Rook Exodus number 4 a well-earned 9.5 out of 10. That's one of our highest scores in months because this issue earned it. But what do you think? Are you reading any of the Ghost Machine titles? Give us a thumbs up if you are and leave us a comment below with which Ghost Machine title you think is the best. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be much appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.